On today's show, Tesla has its best quarter yet in terms of vehicle deliveries. Porsche hires 500 new staff as it expands its Taycan production facilities. And Tesla owners go a little cray cray over the new smart summon feature as rolled out in Tesla's latest software update. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi folks, welcome to another roundup in the world of clean cars and energy. I've got lots of goodies to share with you today, so let's get on with it. As it's the start of October, it means we've just completed the third quarter and as such, Tesla has just published its delivery and production figure estimates for the same period. In total, Tesla produced 96,155 cars, with Model 3 taking the lion's share at nearly 80,000 units. 97,000 deliveries were made in the quarter too, missing out on Tesla's 100,000 vehicle goal by just a bit. Interestingly, the majority of deliveries were to non-lease customers, suggesting that most people are still buying their Teslas rather than leasing them. Volvo has continued to tease details about its upcoming XC40 electric SUV. This week, it showcased how the new plug-in will fit into the Volvo family. It's shown the digital dashboard animation for the XC40 EV, as well as explained a little more about the car's load carrying capabilities this week. This includes confirming that the XC40 EV will come with its own front trunk that the company says will offer a total of 30 litres of luggage carrying capability. While there's no video of this yet, the images shared by Volvo do show a very Tesla-like frunk. The car will get revealed later this year. Audi has been talking about its plans for electric vehicles this week, confirming that the upcoming 2021 Audi Q4 e-tron will be built on the same MEB platform as the Volkswagen ID3. At the same time, Audi's team have confirmed that the upcoming e-tron GT will indeed be built on the J1 platform as thought, which is the same platform as the Porsche Taycan. Other models will also share that platform, we're told, with the highest end, largest plug-in models from Audi due to be built on the premium electric platform or PPE. Porsche has officially confirmed that it's hired 500 new employees at the production facility where its Taycan has just begun production. This increase in production, amounting to about 2,000 people working on the Taycan in total, is in direct response to a higher than expected number of orders received for both the Taycan Turbo and Taycan Turbo S. Porsche has not yet detailed the exact specifics of the production capacity increase, but it does show that there are plenty of people willing to pay six figures or more for a plug-in Porsche. Lucid has officially begun groundwork on a 21 million square foot facility in Arizona, where its Lucid Air electric car will be made. Lucid has kind of flown under the radar for many in the auto industry, but the company now appears ready to take the next step and its Casa Grande facility is said to come with a 675 million US dollar price tag. Lucid is aiming to have the first production airs coming off the production line sometime in the next year or so. The current generation Mini Cooper SE may have only just launched, but parent company BMW is already turning its attention to that car's successor. And according to Auto Express this week, that next generation Mini will likely go on a bit of a diet, coming to market sometime early next decade as a smaller, more svelte model with electric drivetrain as standard. Uh, but don't get too excited. While the brand will shrink the Mini's design, it'll be more in keeping with the original design of the new Mini from 2001, not the Alec Isagonis original. Polestar has officially revealed European pricing for its all-electric Polestar 2 Fastback this week. Starting at just under €60,000 in most of Europe, just shy of £50,000 in the UK, four hundred and sixty-nine Norwegian krona or 659000 Swedish krona, the luxury plug-in will come as standard with a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack and 300 kilowatts of all-wheel drive power. Specs haven't been fully released yet, but these prices do include three years of free servicing and sales tax. 
After last week's V10 rollout of Tesla's latest vehicle operating system, Tesla says that more than half a million smart summon sessions have been activated by customers. Smart Summon, which effectively lets you remotely summon your car from its parking space to meet you, is only intended to be used in private parking lots and on private roads. But the internet has been flooded with videos of people using it outside of those restrictions. What's worse, though? A not insignificant number of videos showing near misses or collisions caused by improper use of what Tesla still cautions is beta functionality. If you have it, have fun, but please use it responsibly. We may all still be waiting for Nissan to show us its upcoming long-awaited crossover, but at the Tokyo Motor Show later this month, Nissan is due to debut a small K-car city car designed for busy urban life. Called the Nissan IMK Concept, this is a car that's probably only really going to find buyers in Japan, where cars under a certain power limit and physical dimension are free of the parking permit requirements that usually come with car ownership in Japan. The IMK features new ProPilot functionality, including automated valet parking and some other self-driving tricks. And finally, here's one for you. If your Tesla commits a traffic violation when you're not technically at the wheel, do you get a ticket? It kind of sounds like a question for a late night chat when you've had maybe a little too much to drink, but the folks at Drag Times found out when playing with a smart summon feature of their Model 3 this week. Their car ran a stop sign in a parking lot and a local police officer noticed and pulled them over. While it's not clear if this was a genuine stop or a setup, the guys at Drag Times did ultimately say that you're responsible for your car, but in this case, the cops didn't ticket them. As I've said before, however, you really shouldn't be using the system like this. Just don't. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, please do send it our way. We love hearing from you. Make sure too that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you're at a computer, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch. And if you do, you're going to be helping New Zealand towards a 100% zero emission future. I'll be back soon with some new episodes. But until then, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.